Previously on High Stakes Poker. Oh, once or twice. Antonio stacked Barry in a $600,000 pot. He's doing magic. He is the magician. As the action kept coming. Let me introduce you to Phil Ruffin. 50000 Wow. Such a huge overbet. You guess, sickos. I guess it's okay to be wrong once in a while. And David Pete fired off a $100,000 river bluff into an amateur who wouldn't budge. Call. You got it. You don't bluff Antonio and you don't bluff people with more money than you. Welcome once again to High Stakes Poker, presented by PokerStars.net. I'm Norm McDonald. Well, the story of Season 7 continues to be how our three wealthy amateurs are faring against the top professionals. Last week, hotel magnate Phil Ruffin proved he could not be pushed off a of hand. Silly Band's creator Robert Croak proved that he could. And entrepreneur Bill Klein showed us that even if you have a good run at business, you can have a bad run at cards. He's down close to $400,000 going into tonight. On the upside, he's contributing all his losses to charity. And by charity, I do not mean cash game specialist David Pete. Well, Antonio on top of the world, near $400,000 up. And there's a live straddle, Klein straddling to $1,600. Now, I know you all know what that is, but my Aunt Ida is watching tonight for the first time with her friends, so I need to explain it to her. Aunt Ida, a straddle is essentially the third blind. Players do it to create more action. They love you, Aunt Ida, and keep taking the medication. The doctors are your friends. Barry says, here's the action you're looking for. Call. Call. You made it 10,000. I made it 10. Straight 10. And Ruffin's in the mood to gamble. Total of 10. Uh, I wouldn't ever call it. A big slick for the straddler. I'm all in. And so Klein moves all in. And that's Thank right. you. <laughs> and a nice start for this episode. I'll be saving me 8,400. And Barry decides to go for it with his last 56,000. If he loses, he'll rebuy and start fresh. He's in a lot of trouble. That's what I was afraid of. Yep. Oh. What I usually run into is that hand these coins. Always ace king working. Barry is searching in his pocket for any $25,000 chips. And a great flop for Klein. Well ahead. The turn pairs, so that gets Barry some more outs to a split, a 10 or a 7. And that's what hits. Shafarinsky. So Klein gets unlucky. And Barry will keep nurturing his short stack. Put those back away. Man, you just put those in your pocket like that? And not a bad outcome for two philanthropists. No blood. You're chopping up my 10,000. I guess that's what you're doing. <laughs> that's what it's all about, Phil. Yeah, You're trying to chop your 10,000. The only way we can beat you. Two on one. Croak clears the path. To look at his cards, finds four high. Big slick again for Klein, and he raises. 
Pete viffs his chips in. And Doyle comes for the ride. Possible trouble for Viffer. Viffer calls. And this is interesting. Doyle is thinking of a squeeze play. I'll explain the squeeze play to you later, Aunt Ida. Well, he decides against it. Well, the turn adds a straight draw to Viffer's possible suckout scenarios. But he has to call 10,000 to get there. And he does. And he'll take option one, the two pair suck out. Really? Always a nine. Hmm? That's 20,000. Bill Clyde is sure running bad. He has been big favorites in many situations, but the cards have not been kind to him. A seven. A uh, seven. A nine. A nine. No. Always a nine. Yep. Good hand. Ace king. Tough hand. You know what they call Always ace. You know what they call ace king. You know what they call it, don't you? Ace king. Can let them know on like uh, three hundred more, please. That's three hundred thousand dollars, Aunt Ida. The man does not like to play short stack. The what? Anna, Anna Kornikova. Anna Kornikova. Looks good, but never wins. <laughs> Welcome back to High Stakes Poker. Every year we bring some of the hottest tournament players to see how they fare in the cash game. And Vanessa Selbst has been setting the tournaments on fire. Would you say you're primarily a tournament player? Yeah, you know, now I'm definitely primarily a tournament player. I started out playing cash games um, when I first built up my bankroll and I first really learned how to play the game. I was definitely more of a cash player. In the last two or three years, I've mostly focused on tournaments. I enjoy them better. I think there's a little bit more to think about. So hopefully I can still hold my own against these cash game sharks. For you, it's been an incredible year. You've been playing only part time because you're also finishing law school. And then you've got two major titles already this year. Yeah, I was in law school uh, through June. And so I played a couple tournaments. I played Mohegan Sun on the North American Poker Tour, Poker Stars tournament, and was lucky enough to win that. Um, for 750000 and then I decided that I was going to take last semester off and, you know, focus more on poker. So I think all in all, that's almost $3 million, uh, in tournament winnings this year. So it's been an incredible year. Um, I'm hoping I can continue that. I still have another year of law school to finish, so, you know, uh, who knows what the future holds, I guess, but, but we'll see. I mean, you know, I've been incredibly lucky to get where I am, and I'm hoping I can just keep it up. Sure beats defending the innocent. Ace King of Diamonds to Phil Ruffin, the owner of Treasure Island, along with many other islands. He just limps in. He's seen Bill Klein get slaughtered with that hand. If you know everybody but one, but you don't know which Viffer didn't look at his hand. And Doyle raises with the Fantasy Island. 6,800. How much to me? Six thousand. I fold. Oh, 
Well, looks like Raffin will get more treasure for his island. Thank you. Check, check, though. And a ray of hope for Doyle on the turn. He has a flush draw now. At 20,000. And there it is. That's a fun door. Check. I think I just got an ace. No, Doyle, you got more than that. Check. Two pair. You got it. Ace king. No, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> it's all right. Okay. I'm out of bed. <laughs> I'm out of bed. Thank For those you. of you who know Doyle, he did not slow roll rough in there. That was a genuine brain lock. I lived my entire teen years with that. Doyle is 77. And I checked when I should have raised. I should have bet it. Cost me money. But Lady River, that river. If there wasn't a river, there'd be no fish. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. Thank you, Bill. Senior moment. You sure you just weren't dogging a value bet there? No, no, no. I might have bet that. He might have bet a flat. I think he would have. I mean, all the big hearts were out there. In the 70s? Yeah. Huh? In the 70s? His age? No. Now, Doyle looks at one ace and raises. I guess he figures... He'll forget the other card anyway. The queen, jack ten, nine, fourth note. Raise to 11,000. I told you ace king really well. And now he looks at the other card, ace seven suited, oh, nice. Wow. Mm -hmm. And calls Vanessa's re-raise. So these two will tangle again. It was either fifth or sixth, depending on what the small card was, what the five was. Not bad. Uh-oh. As Antonio would say, somebody is getting whacked. Vanessa bets 18,200. 18,200. Doyle can call or raise in this situation. Call in. Well, I guess he raises. How much is it? Well, Vanessa looks like she's worried about ace queen, but there's no way she's not calling this. I guess 180. I have to call. I call. Okay, call. You want to run it? How many? You want to do it? What do you want to do? I don't care. It's up to you. What do you have? For sure. Twice? Oh, wow. Made a queen. Yeah, twice, I guess. So. Twice it is. <clears throat> I guess I walked there at a good time. You yeah. did. There's kind of a small pot going on. Every time Antonio leaves the room, somebody goes all in. So they're going to run it twice, Aunt Ida. What that means is they're going to play the hand twice. Each time for half the pot. I have one person in the ball. Oh, There's half to Doyle. I'll play this ball. My heart. If he does it again, he'll win the whole pot. Always good doing the first one, huh, Doyle? Makes the second one easier. You see those cards up above, Antida? Those are his outs. He has to catch one of those. Still a queen this time. No. Not on the turn. And not on the river. Chop, chop. Oh. It's a pretty big sweat there on the river. Nice hand, Doyle. Yeah. That sounded sincere. Chop up the blinds. 
Welcome back to High Stakes Poker. Well, here's the stack sizes, three ahead and five trailing. This gets real mizzy in this game. Where is the Miz? I don't know. The Miz. Lunkin. Lunkin vibes. Seeping through my veins. Antonio brings it in for 2,500. Croak calls. Bolt. Lunkin. And that's trouble for Croak. Treasure Island owner has the jackpot against him. And he bets his aces up. Call. Phil Reffin says, I call. 65. Lunkin. <laughs> Croak thinks he has the best hand. Bet eleven thousand. Fifty thousand. Raise the fifty thousand. Croak thinks he may have the worst hand. I'm all in. All in. Call. Call. Once or twice? Once. I got a straight. He said once. No discount. Nice hand. Nice hand, sir. Nice hand, sir. And that'll do it. Croak is felted. There you go. Yeah, I'll take another and Ruffin looks like he has no room for the cash. He has close to nine hundred thousand dollars. All right, gentlemen, ladies, thank you. Robert Croak decides not to rebuy. He'll live to fight another day. I'll see you guys. Uh, nice I'll see you Friday. Nice see playing. You. Nice playing. You too. Okay. Thank you. And I don't know about this Ruffin guy. He may just be a poker pro and. This Treasure Island deal is just a front. Doyle looks sad to see Croak go. Yeah, yeah. Flop the straight. Call. Our whale calls with King Salmon. It's just a call. I like playing him. Raised to 3,000. Tough player, but good action. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm on action. You are right too. And the two meet again. I didn't want to either. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather have that than a set. A two pair. Flop is accommodating. Top pair against an open end straight draw. You and me. Just he and I. Just the right guys are in it. Oh, I like that with all these things, believe me. Five of them? These two didn't have a history until that $100,000 bluff Viffer made and was called by Ruffin. But here on out, every time they play, they're going to be thinking of what happened in that hand. Three of diamonds comes in the turn. That twenty-five thousand. Ruffin is not pulling back his punches. Viffer misses. This hand's practically over. Hundred thousand. That one hundred thousand. Of course, you never know with Viffer. Well, 
Well, she would have bet 25000 <laughs> Well, then I could have raised you. Yeah, that would have worked. You saved money. I had trip, trip, trip kings. Ruffin is approaching the million dollar mark. Very nice, Sam. We're back at the beautiful Bellagio playing high stakes poker. And now it's time for this week's PokerStars.net High Stakes Legends. Only one player in history has won three World Series main event tournaments, and that man is the late Stu Unger, the original rock star of poker. The kid, as Stewie was called, was fearless, reckless, and a genius at Texas Hold'em, one time famously making a hero call with 10 high in a $100,000 cash game pot. His aggressive style was ahead of its time, anticipating young guns like Phil Galfond and Jason Mercier. Stewie's 1997 comeback to win the main event was called by Mike Sexton the greatest performance ever. And to this day, many believe that Stewie was the best No Limit Hold'em player who ever lived. How much do you have in front of you? I can't see any of your chips. Uh, 200 ish. 200 total? 195 million. Call? 195 Rough and limping in again. Option raises 4,000 more. 4,000 more. Call? And Pete says, three babies, please. Those aren't babies. Ruffin flops a pair of kings again. What's that? 11,000? 30,000. Well, that should do it, I believe. Did you, did you get that? No way, it's up there, other. Not yet. I have to say that Ruffin has absolutely no fear of these guys. There are a lot of wealthy businessmen who play poker, but most of the time they are intimidated by the pros, not Phil Ruffin. Doyle looks like a wounded tiger, thinking, just keep coming back, Phil. Just like going to a lot of restaurants. But they, they puree a steak, I heard. They chop it up yeah, and blend I just... it. Just not quite the same thing. Slightly different. Um... You spend most of your time there? Raise. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Decent cool. hand for Doyle on the button. I come here quite a bit. But. Long trips are tough. His nemesis, Selps. We raised 12,000 total. Part of the majority of traveling overseas is the food and. Mm -hmm. Heads up. Doyle's thinking, doesn't yeah, she know who I am? CNN International Sports or something. All the sun comes up again. That is 10,000. Doyle's hoping he's against King Queen. Not the kind of card Doyle wanted to see. Vanessa's wondering what Doyle's got. And she must be putting him on a small pair and trying to move him off of it. Of course, we know better. It's the queen man she raised me with up there. Doyle hates to get outplayed.
He throws it away. Just couldn't see how Ace-4 could be the best hand. And he's got to be wondering, are these kids getting better, or am I just running bad? Back for more high stakes poker. Strudel. Oh, we got a fish cake. We got a new player joining the table, Andrew Robel. Looks like he skied down here. Mr. Robel's coming off his, you know, big WPT finish. I'm coming for that WPT money, kids. I, I got the perfect seat for it. He talked with Kara about coming into this game. I watched some of what was going on, and it looks like a great game today. Lots of action, and I'm excited to take part. And there's quite a few businessmen at the table, you know, more recreational players rather yes. than professionals. How does that change it? Um, it's kind of all the high stakes pros. We kind of all know how each other play because we've played together so much throughout the years. So when there's, you know, a new element and no one knows how they play, it kind of changes the whole dynamic of the game. It's harder to figure out what not only that person is doing, but what the other people are doing because, you know, the businessman is in the pot. Oh, well, good luck out there. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, you got some silly bands? Here, kid. I'm going to hook you up, too. Oh, wow. 200 million. <laughs> <laughs> so the straddle is on again. Found out one thing silly vans are not Grace. good for. <laughs> 4,500. 4,500 total. Oh. Oh. It's a pretty big poker game. Pretty big game. So David Pete raises under the gun with Jack 10 suited and gets called by three players. He's not really in that bad of a shape. Thank you. Four players for the flop. And flops the best hand. Checks. Checks. Okay. And it checks around. Check. Give me six. He'll take a shot at it. Four. Vanessa raises thirty eight thousand five hundred. She knows Viffer is capable of firing with blanks. I got 16. Yeah. 16. Okay, 5,000. 10, 15, 16. 28,000 more. Plus 10,000, raises 28,000 more. Okay. Making sure I'm playing too long. I was checking to see how experienced you are. <laughs> Call? And Viffer reads her mind. Queen of Clubs, a very scary card for Vanessa. I wonder if she's going to be able to continue with her story. Viffer, portrait of a serial killer. Of the ten. Ten, dude. How can I bluff that river? Well, you just saw my favorite part of poker, the psychological game. The mathematics of it confuse me. I just get happy when I have four outs and put all my money in the pot, and then I get really mad if I miss. 
And then I go down to the blackjack tables and chase my losses there. If that doesn't work, there's always video Kino. Only way you're gonna win that pot is showing the best hand. That was difficult to do. I know. He's bowed up over like a bulldog. Nope. I'll tell you exactly what it was. You've cost me millions by putting out that video and it just cost yourself 40000 from all those videos you guys make of online. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Is anybody else? She gave this lesson on that, how that's like a great spot for me to be bluffing, so she re-bluffed. Oh. But I knew that she knew that I was weak, so she was bluffing, so I knew she knew that I knew <laughs> that she knew. So everyone understands Vanessa makes like online poker videos, giving away all her secrets. Okay. Live stream. The main secret is she never has it. <sighs> that's not a secret. Sick truth. I already know about that part. It's a sad, sick, sick sad truth. I don't think you'd think I'd bet 100k on the river with a flush, but I would have. <sighs> I would have. Right? Be 100k richer. 70k, I know. That's why I didn't bluff. Ruffin finds another king in his hand, but he's dominated. Six total. I need. Be rude not to. And Viffer takes the low road. Punish him, Viffer. <laughs> I'm trying. Punish the internet wizard. What's your well, he's not who I was trying to punish. Three players for the first. Ice sticks poker. Mm -hmm. um, 5,000. That is 5,000. Ruffin says here, punish this. 5,000 is that. Wouldn't it be cool if a deuce and a ten showed up? Oh. Robel has the best hand with two queens. Five thousand. Five thousand? Thank you. And Ruffin bets five thousand again. That's just like checking. Ruffin doesn't like to check. Robles hoping nobody's got an ace. Twenty. That is twenty thousand. Rough and determined to win this pot. Okay, Biffer, you got five high. Hold. Hold. Now I'm confused. Why not five again? A second, there's a new sheriff in town. You win. And now these two have a history. Just hoping you're bluffing. Mm -hmm. So Ruffin gives a little back. He wasn't bluffing against me. <laughs> We're back for more high stakes poker. You didn't bluff every hand. No. You got it in good. Yeah. Might as well have been bluffing. Ruffin with one of his favorite hands. Oh. Limps. Oh. join this party. Identical hand for ourselves, King Seven suited. I'm trying to ruin this party. Great. Right. 
And Barry will punish the limpers. You have like 30, 40. Except. Total. His neighbor's got a gun. We raise 20,000 total. Bad timing. He's a machine. There's no stopping him. That's not it. He just knows it's his week. It's my week. Barry's thinking I haven't raised in five years and I have to run into a hand. Vanessa seems to be enjoying herself despite the fact that she's stuck Live over 200,000. Klein straddles. Biffer with Jack Five polishes the table. Mm. That's pretty bad. <laughs> Doyle is thinking about putting his queen 10 to work. What? Nope. Raise. Barry raises with ace two suited. Antonio, always suspicious of Barry. Plenty of history between these two. Yeah, and there it goes. 15,500. What? You're only playing like 30, Barry? Yeah. Call. 15,500. 15, Ruffin with two eights. And Klein doesn't feel like gambling with ace eight suited. Barry also folds. He thinks he can find a better spot for his remaining 30,000. Okay. Ruffin in trouble with eights with three overcards and a gutter that's no good. Antonio decides to keep it friendly. Still very friendly. Ruffin tries to represent the 10 for a straight. Antonio doesn't take too much Eight. time to call. Eight. Always a nine. Always a nine. Mm -hmm. Nine's running hot. I didn't think you'd call that, Antonio. <laughs> he probably doesn't call if he doesn't have the king. I don't know about that. All right. I think he would have called him with less. Unrivaled fare pairs with unrivaled luxury at any of Bellagio's sensational restaurants. The Five Diamond award-winning resort offers a selection of worldwide formal and casual dining which may be experienced by any palate. We are back at the new home of high stakes poker, the Bellagio. Which is in the Elves. And the Elves, the, which is in Elves going? Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Right. Yeah. We're always somewhere around a holiday, I guess. There's always a holiday. There's always a nine and there's always a holiday. Every day's a holiday around here. When Antonio is playing? Well, like Ruffin day. hasn't folded a king. And he's not gonna do it this time either. Klein just calls with ace queen. I call, I call. Here's four more for y'all. Appreciate you. <laughs> I can't put a chip in the pot. Not yet, anyways. So five way action to the flop. Look at this flop. Two people with trips and two with queens. Klein has the ace kicker, but they all check. Doyle can't check anymore, bets 4,000. Vanessa's thinking, should I raise now or should I let everyone in? Maybe Viffer will get cute if I just call. 
She decides to call. Klein is wondering if his hand's any good. A pair on board is always scary with too many people in the hand. I fold. And that's exactly the reason Viffer throws his queen away. Three pairs to the river. King of Hearts looks like a safe card to Doyle Brunson. That is 15 cards. Vanessa's probably going to come out of the weeds with a value raise. Such a bow of Tinder, an interesting hand. Fifty-two thousand. That's the Fifty-two thousand. That should tell Klein where his queens are at. And wow, Doyle shows his six and mucks it. The speed of that laydown illustrates why Doyle Brunson has been revered for fifty years. Tendus got you in trouble again, huh, Doyle? The Viffer's just yeah. kidding. He knows Texas Dolly laid down a six. I knew something was wrong with it when he popped it out there. And Vanessa's saying, I never get paid off. Next time on High Stakes Poker. Feel the love, don't you? Feel the love. Feel the love. Tensions get high as the bets get big. Give you a fair warning. Just want to stir it up a little, you know? Getting bluffed every hit. You bet 20,000 every time, and they were like, couldn't believe you had it every time. And before you know it, Barry and Vanessa put their opponents to the test. No, I'm all in. I'm all in. Sick bluff. I'd like to play this hand over. That's okay. I wasn't going to play. I was going to raise it. Might as well just have been bluffing. Might as well have been.